I get counted in, too. This is very cool. And you're live. Excellent. Um, hello, my name is Agma Hogbin, and um, I have made the trek down from, let's see if that's the first slide. That's right. That's where I'm from, from Canada. And uh, I, I will say A more than a few times in this presentation, just to keep things exciting. Unfortunately, I did not bring my guitar, and um, I haven't written any music. Um, my apologies in advance for that. But there will be bagpipes, um, at least the mention of bagpipes. And um, basically, this talk is a little bit about a conference that I run up in Owen Sound. It's okay, you don't need to know where it's from, um, or where we are, rather. Um, and what I've done is started a technology conference in a rural farming community that has 20,000 people. It's pretty tiny. <laughs> but I've had some really great successes, and I've learned a lot of things um, along the way. And this talk is basically looking at how you can organize a community event and have it be successful. So there's a few things about me specifically. I discovered the internet in 1995. Um, uh, Netscape 1.1 had just barely replaced uh, Mosaic, I guess it was. And I found Moose Muds and Mushes and um, the joy of time zones. Um, <laughs> so this is uh, Mars, if anyone uh, is of that inclination. I was Newt at the time. Uh, I've run through a whole range of different operating systems, uh, BSD, OS 10, and then a range of different Debian systems. I'm now running Ubuntu, for those of you that um, care about that kind of thing. Uh, you'll notice that Windows isn't in there at all. I'm best known for having knit the Drupal socks. Um, I have a lovely low user ID as on Drupal.org as well. Mostly I contribute... Um, patches, uh, not core development stuff. And HickTech is my rural technology conference. Um, the steer, not a cow because that would have to be a girl, is a charlet. The turbine is a vista with a number attached to it. And really, this is what technology is all about. This is about a 45-minute drive from my house, and the um, guy who runs the turbine project will be speaking at HickTech. Hick is how the internet connects knowledge. It's also a little bit of this. Um, just outside of my hometown is um, the Canadian National Pumpkin Chucken Contest. Um, we have people from all over North America that come to this competition. If you're unaware of what pumpkin chucken, and it's not pumpkin, it's pumpkin chucken, is, um, we do a little bit of this. <laughs> <laughs> Um, as you'll see, that one's a fail because the pumpkin has actually fallen apart midstream and uh, the guys on these vehicles um, will go out into the field to measure how far the pumpkin got. Um, there are several classes of pumpkin chuckers. So we have both the, um, I believe this one is a trebuchet as opposed to the um, air-powered cannons. So it's very serious business and the event always, of course, starts with a piper. Now, you'll notice that uh, this piper is not in his good dress. That's because of the mud. He's wearing his utility kilt instead. At Hick Tech, we will have a piper piping us in, and he will be in full dress. Um, it's just one of the things that you get to do when you live in a small community and um, show up at a coffee shop and have the piper show up and say, yeah, I heard you're doing a technology conference. Do you want to be piped in? Yes, I want to be piped in at my technology conference. So we have a lot of fun doing it. Um, we launched in 2007, which of course is last year. And in our first year, we had business, digital lifestyle, education, and health. There were a number of workshops. The best one was by Bar 5. Bar 5 is a cow breeding operation. They focus on, this is Red Angus, Black Angus, and Simmental. These ones are Simmentals. Um, these are things you need to know if you're going to run a rural technology conference. The greatest part for me about this session was you think, okay, yeah, great, cow breeders. That's um, kind of hick, isn't it? 
Well, they have RIFID tags on all of their cows. At any point in time, they can tell you where their cow is in the field. They don't touch them when they go through the chutes to be weighed um, because they normally you have uh, an ear, ta uh, ear tattoo, rather, so you'd have to flip open the ear to see what the tattoo is. They're all chipped. Um, they can tell you where, or sorry, which cow is in each box of beef that they send to a store. Um, and the best part about them, they've got high-speed internet connections at the farm. There's multiple buildings. It is a very large operation. They have um, surrogate herds in the U.S. Sorry, mentioning again that I am Canadian. And um, they've got surrogate herds in the U.S., Chile, South Africa. They were working on Russia last year. Um, so how they've gotten around the beef ban or the export ban is that they ship live embryo and then implant them into the surrogate herds. This is a very, very high-tech operation. They do have high speed on the farm, except at feeding time. Because it's a line of sight technology, it can't get through the hay truck. So what they have to do <laughs> is they have to wait until the cows eat the hay down to the point where their line of sight wireless technology exists again. So it's a very high-tech operation with some of those rural uh, gotchas, for lack of a better word, still built in. So they were amazing last year. My, just, my jaw was on the ground for their whole presentation. So in the second year, this year, we've changed the content streams a bit. We now have business, community, food and agriculture, and technology. Um, our speakers this year are coming from a wider base. So you can see across the bottom there, we've got Yahoo Canada, Flickr, cbc.ca, which is our NPR, and then also The Guardian is sending over someone from England. So we've got a decent lineup of speakers, and we also have um, local experts as well. And basically, uh, HickTech sort of started out, I thought it was going to be a geek conference. How wrong was I? Um, I put it together thinking it was going to be sort of a skills upgrade, and geeks would get together, and they'd talk about technology, complain about their clients. Totally not what happened. The client showed up and said, okay, this technology stuff, I don't get it, I want to know about it, and I'm going to pay you for it. So, and they don't pay a lot, they're paying $150 for a one-day conference, but they're willing to participate in it. We focus on local wherever possible. We've got local speakers, local food, and a local location. Um, I was mentioning earlier that this is a small town, and um, the biggest venue that we have is the hockey arena, or hacky. Um, so uh, we, there isn't ice on the rink this time of year. However, we are in the hockey arena. And that um, allows us to have a conference of 250 people. We could do a bit more, but it gets tricky with the um, food, in terms of local food and feeding that many people. So the great thing about HickTech for me is um, how many generic, where we've, we generally have a, a bunch of colorblind people with this demographic. How many people are colorblind? Anyone? That's unusual. The women are on top, just in case you are and don't want to admit it. Um, we've got more women registered at this conference than we have men. The really great thing about it is that they bring their husbands. So we do actually, this is a bit of a role reversal. You normally get the men registering their wives. This is the women registering their husbands to come to the conference. The first year, we had um, basically gender balance in terms of male and female presenters. I find that this really, it doesn't, their talks aren't any more or less difficult in terms of the content, but when women can see themselves in the presenters, they're more likely to come as registrants to the conference. So this is what my first year looked like, was gender balance. My second year, I'm pretty close. I do have more male presenters than female presenters, but as you saw with the registrants, we're pretty good in terms of the gender balance. For me, that means that I've got twice as many people coming. So instead of having, instead of just focusing on the men, they'll figure out how to get there. It's techie stuff. If they want to come, they'll come. But the women need a bit more encouragement. They also registered early. Two-thirds of my early bird registrants. There was no financial um, incentive to register early. They get free stuff, but there's no financial incentive. They registered early, which put money in my bank account, which makes it easier to run my conference. There's basically, and I've zoomed through this, and I'll probably only be 10 minutes into my 40 or 30 minute presentation, but there's basically 10 things that I've found 
Um, the eleventh thing, which I'll start with, which I don't think I actually have a slide for, is to ask. Ask people to come and present, to be sponsors, and that's basically the overall theme. Um, a lot of people are very surprised that I've got a keynote speaker coming from San Francisco to speak in a hockey arena in small town Canada. And she agreed to come because I asked her. It was pretty, pretty simple on my part. If they don't want to come, they won't come. Um, I also asked the, um, oh, what's his name? The dude who runs Plenty of Fish. Someone will know his name, I'm sure. But I asked him to come and speak. And within 10 minutes, he emailed me back and says, sounds like an awesome conference, but I can't come. So even if it seems a little bit crazy, I, I knew that if I got him, he'd, um, he'd pull a lot of people in because it's very popular in small town Ontario where you um, don't necessarily have a very deep gene pool to pull from. <laughs> so I knew that he'd be a big pull. And this is the really great thing for me is that just have the nerve to go ahead and ask. So here's the, the 10 things that I found. The first one is engage. Be part of your community. So kids, if you've got kids, you know, go out and take part in activities, whether it's through the schools, talk to parents, if you have playdates, if you do that kind of thing. But ultimately, you don't need to have kids to be part of your community. Be part of the Chamber of Commerce. As much as they drive me up the wall, they've resulted in more than a few registrations for me. Local theater, the gallery, local coffee shop. I include the coffee shop in here because, um, and this absolutely appalls my mother, but I went up to a guy who said the word technology in a bar, and this is, again, small town Canada, and gave him my business card and said, hey, I know about technology in small town Canada. You should come to my conference. And two days later, he registered. So basically, get out there and be a part of your community. You can't expect people to show up at your event if you haven't made the effort to show up at their event. And there's a lot of stuff happening in most communities. Second thing, earn your media. Do not pay for your media. There's absolutely no reason to advertise in large publications. That's what media releases are for. Especially with, um, do they have Metro? Yeah, they do. Metro is the one that's handed out on the subway stations in Toronto. And, and that's the thing, is that it's, it's a regional publication. It's going to have some kind of local content. If you can get your story into it as a, a news item, you're not paying for content, and you've got that 30-minute commute where people are actually going to read the content that's in there. So send the media releases to everyone. Don't just send it to the large publications. Think about those freebie options as well. So for me, um, there's also grocery stores, and there's publications that happen they're free, they get handed out in grocery stores, there's the bulletin boards in grocery stores as well. But find unusual places to market your event. You'll end up getting unusual people, but that's probably good. <laughs> Third thing, know your matriarch. Um, I've changed only two things since the first year. I hired a different graphic designer for my posters, of which I've only printed 100, so there hasn't been a huge... Um, huge uh, visual campaign, for lack of a better word, and I got um, a volunteer who was part of the homecoming organization committee from, the, from last year's homecoming. She's been amazing. Ultimately, she's better than Facebook. She knows everybody, and um, Owen Sound's a retirement community, so there's all kinds of fabulously knowledgeable people who've got a lot of time on their hands, and they're interested in technology because they want to connect with their grandkids, they want to book their vacations online, they want to check their stock portfolio. So they're interested in technology, but they're not really sure who they can get the information from. In fact, they're probably terrified of getting the information from their family because their family is constantly telling them, well, it's not that they say anything negative to them, they just kind of tisk and roll their eyes. So this is a safe place for the matriarch uh, to come and learn about technology. And the, this is actually, uh, this is Marg Capel, and she came to HickTech last year. Uh, lives in a step down or step up nursing facility in Owen Sound. So she's, you know, right at the edge in terms of that senior uh, community, and yet she's totally engaged in the stuff that happens. And then to her right is a woman that I um, do computer training with. So I teach her how to use Facebook and print documents and all kinds of different things. But 
they're interested in the community and they're going to get the word out there for you. Fourth thing, buy small ads. So I know I said don't buy ads. The great thing about buying small ads with a smaller publication, you can convert those ads, especially if they're cheap, into conference registrations. Again, it's part of being engaged. So if you show interest in some, what someone else is doing, you may end up with registrations in return. So um, not this one, but an equivalent kind of magazine locally. I spent $60 on an ad and I was immediately rewarded with a $150 conference registration from the person that I placed the ad with. So don't spend a lot of, a lot of money on it, but do spend a bit of money buying into the smaller publications. Now, the large publications. You want to get them as sponsors. So we've got here the, uh, the New York Times, a little bit bigger maybe than the classified ads we saw earlier. Ask for in-kind sponsorship. So what I've been able to do with my local newspaper, which guaranteed is not as big as the New York Times, but what I was able to do was approach them for a sponsorship, and they gave me um, a $1,500 sponsorship, but they gave it to me in ad space. So I now work with one of their ad reps to develop ads, which go in the publication. I got 10 ads for it, um, out of it, rather. But this is a really nice way they get their logo on it, so they get sort of recognition that they're attached to a really cool thing that's happening. You didn't have to pay for it. All you have to do is put the logo on things as a sponsor. So we've got two different ways of approaching ad space. You're either going to go for purchasing small ads and you're targeting that publication for registrants, or you're going to go with in-kind sponsorships from larger media companies. Use easy language. This is the one thing that I have a hard time, especially with HickTech. You have to be able to figure out what the goal or the message for the conference is or the event is in ways that other people can repeat. So I get really excited about the fact that I've got essentially 22 presentations happening and I'll start on my roll of the fact that there's, you know, there's sessions on home solar energy, there's sessions on um, RFID tagging for food. There's sessions on uh, the local flour mill which ships to Israel because he's certified kosher. There's such, and I go on and on and on and on and on. And then Lee's description of it is, it's really cool, she's going to have bagpipes. <laughs> and that's her summary of the technology conference that's happening in Owen Sound. So you need to figure out how um, to, to pitch it to people so that they have the language to turn it into basically advertising, the word of mouth advertising. And to be honest, I'm not great at that part about it with HickTech because I'm too aware of all the details. So when people are talking about my conference, I'm more likely to listen to how they present it to other people. And you can get some really great um, information or ideas from other people to see how they've internalized the information and how they uh, send it out to the rest of the world. I've got someone else who's completely convinced that the technology conference is uh, all focused on food because that's really all she's interested in. So she talks about the fact that it's local food, local catering, uh, a waste-free conference, so we'll have all, you know, there won't be styrofoam. Um, I'm carbon neutral, so I've got an electrician in there right now who's um, measuring the energy consumption for my four rooms plus all the AV equipment so I can buy energy offset credits. Um, all of my speakers will also have their travel uh, offset. And for some people, I'm an environment conference. I don't, I mean, yeah, there's going to be some technology sessions, but they're coming because of the environment focus. So figure out what people are interested in and figure out how to make it into a bite-sized chunk that other people can repeat. Number seven is give it away. Enter yourself into competitions with um, tickets as the prize. Um, business DIA Downtown Improvement Association or the, the Business Improvement Association will often do uh, giveaways, the radio station. They'll often say it a lot of times. Again, it's a matter of knowing your target audience. You know, in sound, there's basically four radio stations. So I've got a good chance of hitting people if I'm using them. In a larger urban center, there would be a lot more radio stations. So you'd have less of a chance of hitting people, but there's also a lot more people. So. 
Um, then once you've given it away, give it away again. Figure out prizes for um, your registrants. So this is, a, I'll give a pit, bit of a pitch here for Lug Radio Live, which I'm speaking at next weekend. It's going to be very exciting. I will get up on stage and talk about vaginas. It'll be a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, so they are giving away a Triple E PC. Um, tell them I, or if you're deciding, if, if you are going, tell them that I sent you because I want to win it. Um, I've promised to cry in public if I do or don't win it. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> so offer rewards for referrals. Uh, the first time that I saw this was uh, Web Directions North. And if I believe it's if you get 10 people registered, you go to the conference for free. So that's their incentive. Whether it's um, donated prizes or whether it's a discount off or that kind of thing, but offer incentives for people to do the marketing for you. Ah, good old social networking tools. You have to just do it. Uh, whether it's a Facebook group or MySpace or blogs or LiveJournal or Twitter or Dig or whatever people are using. Um, again, allow, let your community do this kind of marketing for you. Find someone who's really excited about it and let them run with it. Um, uh, the Holstein Rodeo, which happens just outside of my hometown, has a Facebook group. And um, they are a large rodeo. They'll have a few thousand people come for the weekend. It's Bronco Riding and there's a fish fry. It's in July if you're interested. Um, <laughs> and they have hundreds of people already signed up in the Facebook group that are confirmed to be going to the Holstein Rodeo. Now we know that it's not really the organizers who set it up because the Holstein Rodeo has its Facebook location as being Mount Forest and if you're local you know that that's absolutely not correct. So that's how we knew that it wasn't the organizers who'd set up this Facebook group but it was the energy like someone cared enough about the event to set up the Facebook group and it attracted a whole bunch of different people that the no word of a lie, the Egermont Optimist Club, which is the, um, the folks who run the Holstein Rodeo, it attracted a whole bunch of different people that they wouldn't have been able to reach out to um, if it hadn't been the case. So if you have a live journal account, I don't have a live journal account, but if you do have one, or sorry, if you don't have one, find someone who does. You're going to reach a whole different community than if you were focusing only on the tools that you use. Be flexible. Um, I thought I was going to run a technology conference for techies. In case you're not sure, this is the Red Hat Society and someone who didn't wear their red hat. Um, the, have people heard about the Red Hat Society? Right on, yeah, okay. <laughs> They're awesome. I love the Red Hat Society. Um, be flexible. Allow the community to tell you what they want out of that conference because if they're um, energetic about it, they're feeling engaged, in the planning process, they're more likely to pay you money and they're more likely to show up. So if you want to be able to run a successful event, of course you need to be able to shape it a little bit, but you also need to have people help you shape the event. And every year, every conference is going to be different because different people are going to show up. And those are my top 10. And then of course the 11th was ask, ask, ask. You won't get the guardian at your conference if you don't ask them to come. So those are my Top 10, so again, we're now an, uh, an end user conference, definitely ideas focused. There's not hands-on components to any of what we're doing. <coughs> it's inspired by the community and basically it's the folks who don't really understand technology who have demanded to know more about how it all works. And they're awesome, I love, I love my community. <laughs> Um, I've got, uh, in theory, a two-hour slot after this, and I've got eight topics that I go through, everything from choosing a venue and um, serving alcohol through to uh, how to get the matriarch onto your uh, promotions committee. So those are the things that I go through if you're wanting to know more about it. And that's pretty much it. Those are my Creative Commons thank yous. So I don't know if there's any quick questions now or... No? Okay. Thanks. <laughs>